So this is the masthead of William Lloyd Garrison's original abolitionist newspaper, but it's colorized because it's the Liberator Dot today. All we've said in this series to date is that optimism gets in the way of understanding what hope really is. It's like a playful golden retriever, which relentlessly prevents you from greeting your family inside the door. Yet even a dog as affable as a golden lab becomes unpredictable when threatened, and that's optimism's problem when our situation turns desperate. My name is Lowell Bliss. Welcome to episode four of the Liberator Today's video series on hope. One major difference between biblical hope and optimism is that hope is anchored in God himself, whereas optimism can be anchored in any number of things or in nothing at all. For example, the word hope appears in the Psalms 34 times. In all but just five times, the word is accompanied by a prepositional phrase that ends in God. Hope in the Lord, hope for the Lord, hope in your name, hope in his unfailing love. We say that we hope in the Lord, but you never hear anyone say, I am optimistic in the Lord. Instead, you will hear such phrases as, I am optimistic about our third quarter earnings. Our fundamentals are strong. Or, I am optimistic about a turnaround in this situation. That's been our proven track record. Or, medicine makes new advances every day. I'm optimistic about a cure. Some people are optimists for no other reason than that they are blessed with a good mix of brain chemistry, endorphins, serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin. There's nothing wrong with optimism anchoring itself and whatever, but when times turn bad, when they turn hopeless, hope will go searching for its home in God. But optimism is tempted to double down, to entrench, to become defensive, even violent. We see this in Israel's history. The prophet Jeremiah called the Israelites back to God and into new possibilities, even though exile to Babylon was inevitable. God said to the false prophets and priests, however, they dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. The false prophets are aghast at Jeremiah. We're not going into exile. We are God's chosen people. We have the law. We have the temple. They throw Jeremiah into a pit. G.K. Chesterton, the British writer of the early 20th century, suffered early on from depression, what he called the black dog. He didn't so much become an optimist, though many herald him as such. Rather, he became a student of optimism, and he found it wanting. Even when things are going well, Chesterton thought optimism bore an alarming resemblance to a polite boredom. Unquote. But when our well-being is threatened, Chesterton believed that even a yellow dog has fangs. Quote, what is the evil of the man who is commonly called an optimist? Chesterton asks. Obviously, it is felt that the optimist, wishing to defend the honor of this world, will defend the indefensible. He is the militaristic jingo of the universe. He will say, my cosmos, right or wrong. Unquote. Chesterton suggests that there's even a better place to shift optimism. Let's shift it over to the realm of loyalty or love. He uses a specific illustration of a desperate thing, namely the London neighborhood of Pimlico, which in his day was synonymous with urban decay. Chesterton writes, it's not enough for a man to disapprove pessimistically of Pimlico. In that case, he will merely cut his throat or move to Chelsea. Nor certainly is it enough for a man to approve optimistically of Pimlico. For then it will remain Pimlico, which would be awful. The only way out of it seems to be for somebody to love Pimlico, to love it with a transcendental tie and without any earthly reason. If there arose a man who loved Pimlico, then Pimlico would rise into ivory towers and golden pinnacles. If men loved Pimlico, as mothers love children, arbitrarily, because it is theirs, Pimlico, in a year or two, might be fairer than Florence. Chesterton calls this love patriotism, 
though I prefer the word loyalty, which he also uses. Quote, my acceptance of the universe is not optimism, it is more like patriotism. It is a matter of primary loyalty. The point is not that this world is too sad to love or too glad not to love. The point is that when you do love something, its gladness is a reason for loving it, and its sadness a reason for loving it more. What does the neighborhood of your desperation look like? In other words, what is your Pimlico? It might be a nation, it might be a church, it might be a relationship, it might be a condition. What in or about it do you love? Like a mother loves her child. To what in it are you loyal? Like a patriot loves his country. Optimism wants to hunker down, wants to hunker down over those things and in the face of that Threat will respond with fight, flight, or freeze. Loyalty, however, is going to grab those things tenderly by the hand and say, let's go find Jesus. He is our hope. I am Lowell Bliss, Christian environmental missionary and climate activist. Thank you for visiting the Liberator Dot today.